What to polish on the frame? Okay, uh, as mentioned before, when we're doing the slide, uh, we're gonna make sure we polish the rails. So right here. All the way down both sides. I'm going to polish that area. I'm gonna take the Dremel to it, and then I'm gonna put a polishing compound on the rails on one or both sides of either the slide and the frame. Stick the slide on here when it's a bare frame and there's nothing else in the way and just sit there in front of the TV and rock it and rack it and rack it and rack it and you know count to 100, 200, a million, whatever makes you happy so that the slide operates very cleanly and you don't need a heavy recoil spring just due to drag. It'll be pretty rough at first. Okay, I'm going to polish, let's see here. I'm going to polish in here where I might have the trigger pivoting and riding, uh, especially on the inside of the trigger pivot pin down here. Obviously the slide stop isn't so much a friction area to worry about, we're worried about the trigger pivoting around this pin every time you pull the trigger. So down in here, right by where the tip of the Sharpie is, I want to get that nice and smooth and shiny. Same thing at the back, right here, where the hammer rides, okay? So that spot on both sides. Clean this up really well. Uh, I also want to clean up right about here, where the anywhere kind of in here if I that I can get to where the uh, trigger bow is going to ride it doesn't hurt to polish I did to polish all the way up here I mean worst case it makes the gun easier to clean because crud won't stick to it wiped right off why not uh, I need to polish oh it's really obvious from that camera angle here the, the head of this connector can make contact here can ride there uh, during the trigger travel crucial spots the hole the hammer spring rides in the hole the firing pin plunger rides in. On to reassembly. Step one in the frame is going to be your magazine release going in at the same time that you put the trigger bar plunger in place. Assembly. These are the parts we're about to need. Go ahead and locate them all. Get them all lined up. Spring and plunger with the thin pointy head side down toward the spring, obviously. Uh, go into the magazine release and make sure that's all the way in there. We will later on be taking a punch and pushing it in this way until the head of the plunger is down all the way in where it bottoms out like that. You need a very thin punch for this. So go ahead and find you one. We need to build This bad boy here, the trigger bar plunger. So, fat end with the hole goes up, spring, plunger head, and snake that little itty bitty bastard in the hole. That takes some practice, but there you go. You push it down, you expose the hole, slide the pin in, center it, and let go. And if your gun has had one well, well polished, when you squeeze this, there won't be any zipper or ridge feel. It'll just glide up and down. If it doesn't, take it apart, polish it some more. So, how this goes reassembly-wise, remember, I'm left-handed. I'm going to put this thing back together backwards. Apologies. So, I'm going to note that I'm not flipping this over for obvious reasons. Install magazine release into frame. Okay, so what you need to accomplish so that you can slide this in from the top into that hole in the frame is to have that plunger that I just demonstrated push down so far that it's all the way past that hole while this side of the magazine catch is flush with the frame like that. Not up here, not recessed, flush. Uh, you may want to find something, see where my finger is? You may want to find something to prop underneath there so that when you set the frame down, it ends up flat like this. Uh, I find with the scales grips, they're kind of the perfect thickness so that when I push on this, you see how I can just lift on this a hair and it's flush. Okay, downhill. So all I'm gonna do is stick this in and it doesn't matter which way because I can rotate it later. It just drives in. Okay, I'm gonna get that down roughly where it wants to stop. And all I'm gonna do is push this in until I hear a click and let go. But first, to get that click, what I have to do Push this down all the way while it's flush. 
and then push that plunger in. I push this down all the way and then push the plunger in with my left hand and let go. And I hear a nice clean click. Uh, this will take you a few tries the first time. I've done this a bunch. But eventually you get what I just got. And believe it or not, this won't fly out. And my mag catch works properly. Okay. Now, I'm going to rotate the head of the plunger around so it points forward like that. So the short sides to the back, long sides to the front, okay? And this will be riding against the trigger bar here. Sure, it makes it easy to get it out. So I need to find an old nail, drill bit, whatever, cut it down and make it just long enough to be the width of the ears on the trigger so it can stay in there. So what I'm gonna do is take the trigger spring, take the short leg and lay it inside the trigger like that. Okay, and roll it back and line it up between the holes in the trigger. And you can see that I put a little bit of pressure on this with my finger, and it'll kind of stay. Now I can slide that pin in there so that it's flush on this side and falling out of this side. Let's fix that. There we go. It's in this side and it's in this side. Okay, now. What I'm gonna do is drop the trigger bar, the back of the trigger bar in first, and rotate the trigger so that it falls down in the, into its hole there, like that. So at the back, it's gotta be riding in here. At the front, trigger's in the hole. The trigger spring goes forward and into this notch. Right here. All right, there. It's in. And I'm gonna slide that little slave pin out the gun. Just kind of giving this a wiggle, being gentle. And at some point, trigger spring might get off center. All I'm gonna do is just push it forward. There we go. Just that easy when you get all lined up. Okay, now I've got a pin, I've got a pin uh, punch through the gun, and the spring, the long leg is in here. The short leg, difficult to see in shadow, but it's in here where my punch is. It's inside the trigger. There we go. The trigger bar plunger you can see is riding up and down. So you can see why it's very important to polish here and here on the other side of the trigger bar because that's direct metal on metal. Also, oil or grease it really well. This hole. Bad news now, if you have a regular gun, you have to take a roll pin and drive it through from this side and push your punch or whatever's in there out. Good news if you have the CGW Canic pin is I can slowly pull this back and simply slide the Canic pin in place. And I'll have to do a little bit of wiggling as I go. Just that easily. It's in. Okay. Don't lose the pin for your bolo if you use that. Trigger pins, let's flush that side and flush on that side. And if you have a gun with a roll pin, you had to do a good bit of hammering, but you've got it through now. There you go, that's a good spot. Operationally, the gun looks like this. Next, you gotta put all this together. In the case of somebody with a bolo, it's pretty easy. Slide this in place. Get close. Pin goes in, wiggle, wiggle. Oops, miss. This is the overall relationship of your parts. The hammer strut is offset forward, not to the back, right here at this point, I mean. And the disconnector is hooked downward with the hammer, like so. Uh, with a bolo, know that this pin can slide out pretty easily. So I wanna try and keep this vertical that I put in the gun. I need my hammer spring too. I'm holding both sides so the pin can't fall out of the hammer there. And I'm dropping the hammer spring into its hole here. And by the way, normally I'd be putting a lot of grease on various parts here. I think it's pretty obvious to most of you where that would be. 
Uh, I'm putting this gun together dry so it's easier to see. I don't have to keep stopping to wipe my hands. So now I'm going to put the hammer strut in the hole. Okay. Okay. And the nice thing with the hammer pin though is that at least it goes in easily by hand. All right. So once you get it started, wiggle the hammer a little bit, push with your finger. And as you twist, it'll find its own happy place. Uh, once you get the hammer down in the frame like that, the pin and the bolo cannot fall out. It's stuck between the wings on the frame. So you can see the disconnectors on top of slash in front of the trigger bar. It has to be there. If it's in the back, obviously, that's not going to work. And if it still won't go, I'm going to flip the gun over and actually look and see which way I need to push things. There we go. And guide the hammer in. All right, so if I put downward pressure right here, just a little bit, I can actually replicate how the gun works in double action. So the underside of the bolo and the top side of the trigger bar are all pressed against the bottom of the sear cage, which I told you to polish, by the plunger. The plunger is pushing the trigger bar up. That's why when I push down, it snaps back up. So it's all riding against a point right here. So the bolo is riding against the underside of the sear cage. Now the wings of the sear cage, the outside corners of the sear cage here and here contact. They get pushed downward. And when they get pushed downward far enough, like so, the gun fires. So that's what it does in double action. So you can see exactly where, if I do this, exactly where that spot right there, right here, is crucial to polish. So that's your double action, like, sear, so to speak. And bang. All right. If it'll do that, your gun's put together right. Okay, sear cage reassembly. All right, first thing you're going to do is make life much easier for yourself. Take a piece of Q-tip and cut it down just a pinch narrower than the width of the sear. I cut this notch with the advice of a friend to lighten the sear spring a little bit, but more importantly to make it easier to install because it's somewhere to live. So I'm going to hold the sear with the two hooks up, the other little strut, the little hook on the bottom, and I'm going to insert the spring like so, and then slide my Q-tip pin through everything like that. How this assembly goes into the sear cage I need to hold it like this and the extract the ejector up here so both parts are arranged like this I need to place the tip of the sear spring right in the bottom of that opening and it's going to be headed up into that groove directly in front of it if you can see that and the two claws on the sear itself I need to make sure my pin doesn't slide out one side here get it flush on both sides and it's going to slide up and in like that. So two claws, I make sure that the tip of the sear spring and these two claws went up through and push the Q-tip out. And this can probably be done with your fingers. There's no need to beat on this. Like so, okay. If I take that out, I'll be able to see where this needs to be encouraged to go. Uh, it's important. There you go. All right. So that's all the way through. Uh, it's important to make sure that while you're attempting to do that, that the tip of the sear spring is down in this groove. So that will make the pressure of the spring a lot lower. It'd be less likely to push it off to the side. So now the sear can rock in there. The tip of the spring. One tip's back here, whether you've cut that notch or not. Tip one, the short leg's there, the long leg's in here. 